Uh, Jerome, do you think the fashion industry is going to stay the same uh, after the pandemic? Um, I would say it, it's changing. It has already changed um, in a way that you realize that, I'll talk on the international scene and in the local scene, you realize that internationally a lot of designers um, are now going to be doing shows differently. You know, we, 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 we had a schedule whereby people used to do shows in, you know, fall and then they'll do shows in summer and spring. But then you realize that some brands like Gucci, um, Saint Loha, that's why I sell. Everyone is changing the schedule. They feel like, you know, it's not that appropriate to, you know, do all these shows that they've been doing. And then you realize that a lot of designers, yes, they've been doing a lot of e-commerce, but then you realize that they're not advertising that much. They're not shooting so much like the way they were shooting before. I mean, before we used to be very, very busy wherever, you know, a girl could be on a plane to go to Milan, Paris, London, Milan, and then all that. It's not happening that much, whereby you realize that um, only girls that are based in cities where these designers are are the ones, like, benefiting so much. And then a lot of things have gone digital as well. Like, a lot of clients are going digital, whereby they're asking a lot of girls and then boys to shoot themselves, and then they can actually use these images for campaigns. They can use them for, you know editorials, magazines, and, the, and then all that. So the industry has changed so much, so, so much in a way that it's going very virtual. It's going very digital. Everything is going online. To be honest, like everything is going super, super online. And uh, locally, I would say it's going to be very tough because you will actually realize that the top, top clients that we had, top, um, you know, top organizers of, you know, different events, they are also trying to, you know, have a break and wait until everything stabilizes and they'll come back. For example, you know, Kampala Fashion Week, I love, love Kampala Fashion Week so much, but then you realize that this year Kampala Fashion Week won't be happening. They, um, they actually, de they, they, put out, they, they put out a press release and then they say, you know, they're holding back this year so that next year they come back very strong. And, um, you know, just like you said, even Miss Uganda, you said you're not very certain whether it's going to be happening. And, and imagine so many young girls that are dreaming to actually come into your shoes, that are dreaming to, you know, be like you and one day get a chance to represent the entire nation at Miss World. So a lot of things are changing. Um, I do events as well. Like I'm one person that has been producing for so many, you know, designers because I produce shows so much. But then you realize that a lot of designers, Everyone is a bit scared of doing like solo shows. Everyone is scared of doing like, you know, shows out there. And besides that, we're not even allowed to do shows. To be honest, like everything is just being done online. If you are going to do any show, it has to be pre-recorded, recorded, and then you have to air it online. But then it's hard making money that way. So a lot of things have changed. Literally the events are all gone. Um, there's less jobs. To be honest, there's less jobs. So the best that we can do right now is prep, groom, and get ready for 2021. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thanks for sharing that. You know, I'm just also yes. trying to get used to the fact that we are now, you know, virtual, everything is online. I'm like, mm. wait, wait, I think we're going to start having, like, um, nightlife. Like, if you want to go out, you're going to go out online. I think it's already started. <laughs> you have Don't you see the concerts that are happening online? I... Exactly. Like, th there's so many concerts that are happening right now online. I've just seen, you know, I've been watching Club, you know, Club Beats doing a lot of, you know, shows online. So I believe everything is just going to go online. I'm just dying of that day where they'll say, Ugandan models, you have a show online. <laughs> yes. Everything is online. Everything. Yeah. Okay. So moving ahead, um, what should we expect from your own model management post COVID-19? Okay, post COVID-19, we are going super hard on scouting, like super, super, super hard. Because um, initially before we had a huge teams, huge agencies, they are networks. I'm not going to reveal who they are. Um, they were supposed to fly in here and do like so many scouting tours with us. That is why we're doing like so many scouting tours because they want, you know, they want African models on the international platform. So um, but we're going to continue with that. You know, whether the team's coming or not, we're going to scout extensively. The fact that, you know, the jobs are very limited. If the designers, if the clients, if the advertising agencies are not in position to, you know, do like loads of campaigns, loads of commercials here, we will just go ahead with a scouting, go ahead with developing, go ahead with, you know, nurturing so many models and just make sure they are ready whenever they say the whole world is corona free. As simple as that. Because it's just like being, uh, it's just like knowing that you're going to get married, but then you don't prep yourself. You get it. You don't have a wedding gown. You don't have the shoes. You've not paid for the charge. So right now, what we're trying to do with the scouting is us 
buying the gowns, <laughs> buying the shoes, paying for the charge, and then just getting ready for that day. That's what we're doing. That, that, yeah. The word, the, the word you use uh, scares me, freaks me out. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's the truth. You know, as we embrace the new normal, that's the truth. Yeah. But I know there's, there's going to be so much hope. So, so much hope. Yeah. Okay, what does it take to be a beauty queen? What does it take to be Oliver Nakakande, like how I love to call her? Uh, <laughs> okay, these are the things that, you know, I believe someone should have before they dream of becoming like, you know, Oliver Nakakande. First things first, personality. Personality is very, very key when it comes to pageants. They don't like, um, a lot of judges don't like dull girls. They don't like girls that are so pretty, they're so gorgeous, but then they have no life. So if you're the type of girl hoping to go and compete, make sure your personality is tick 100. And then the other thing is that you must be beautiful from inside out. When I say beautiful from inside out, your heart has to be beautiful. Inner beauty is very, very important. They don't just look for all this. All they look for, your beauty has to shine from deep within. And then the other thing is that it's very important that you do have a beauty with a purpose project, platform, cause. When I say that, know the reason as to why you are going to compete for this pageant. You must have a purpose. You must have a cause. Don't be that one girl that goes to audition for Miss Uganda, Miss Art, Miss Tourism, all these pageants, and then they ask you, what do you want to, you know, why are you competing? And you say, oh, I want to be famous. No, we're not looking for fame. We are looking for people that can serve, people that can be ambassadors, people that are selfless, people that are ready to get their hands dirty, go out there and help as much as they can. And so I talked about the cause, I talked about personality. And then it's also very important that you do have the brains. Please do have the brains. When I say the brains, you don't have to be the most smartest human being on earth, but it's important that, um, you know, you, you, you know what is happening with, you know, the current affairs, you read about stuff in the world. And, um, you know, you, you're not one person that is up, updated. So it's, it's important that you do have the brains. And then the other thing it's, um, you must be very congenial as well. When I say congenial, Oliver one miss congeniality. It's important that you love the girls that you're competing with the same way you love yourself. It's not going to work in a way that you have the personality, you have a beauty, whatever. You have great campaigns, um, whatever the purpose, projects, and then all that. But then you don't like the girls that you work with. It's not going to work. So it's a full package. It's beauty inside out. Yeah. I could have a whole class on this. Yes. <laughs> you said it all. You said it all. I get the question so many times, but I think yes. if uh, people get it from a person like you, then they'll be like, yes. But it takes it takes a lot to be you. That's the one thing that people don't understand. It really, really takes a lot. It's not just you being beautiful, you being tall, having gorgeous skin, having all that. No, it's a lot more, so much more. Yeah. How do you go about competition? Because one thing I know is there is so many people who are like you know model managers i mean in yes. every, every business there's so much competition so how do you go about mm. those in your business how do i handle competition rule number one handling competition is be different when you're different, trust me, you won't even feel like you're competing with so many people. Because I'll give you an example. In New York, there's so many agencies. Paris, so many agencies. London. Even here in Uganda, so many people are coming up with agencies. But then what's the one thing that sets me apart from all these different model managers, agents, and then all that? I am different. Super, super different. Standards are different. Quality is different. I stand for what I believe in. Values are different. So literally be different. And uh, when you're different, you don't even feel like people, you know, you don't feel like you're competing with, you know, someone. And then the other way to handle competition is be extremely ready to learn. When someone comes up, study them. You have to know exactly what are they doing? Um, what are their weaknesses? What are their strengths? What are, so that you capitalize on, you know, their, their weaknesses, capitalize on probably their strength as well. Learn from them. Don't just be that one person that feels like, I got this. I was born for this. Yes, yes, no. Someone could just replace you in a minute. Anyone can be replaced. So it's very important that, you know, you always, you're always on top of your game. This is one thing that I usually do. Research, research, and then research. That is how I handle competition. That is why, that is how I've managed to, you know, stay afloat in this business that I'm doing. I'm always inventing myself. And then the other thing is don't get comfortable. Don't get into that comfort zone and feel like, you know what, we have 10 models modeling internationally. Let's just sit down and relax. Hell to the no. And to that I handle, you know, competition. I am always hungry, like super, super hungry. 
And, um, you know, plus even my, my people skills are very different. And you, you must bring a lot to the table. Don't just be there and uh, just be like a model agent, a model manager, or all that. Be diverse. Be that one person that can do pageants. You can do show production. You can mentor. You can be a life coach. You need to be a 360, you know, type of person whereby at least you have to, you know, work on TV, work in production, study the whole industry. With that, you can actually handle competition. Yeah. You are like really approachable you're not like i am i, I am Dora, <laughs> the star maker who are you don't talk to yes. me you know that kind of thing yeah so how do you manage to be super calm and so approachable and down to up to mm. in this business of like showbiz and people like up there mm. and like underlook people how do you manage to stay calm mm. um i always remind myself of where i came from when you remind yourself of where you came from, trust me, there's no fame in the world. There's no amount of money in the world that will ever change you. Because I come from a background whereby, you know, my parents were very rich, but then they all died at a very tender, you know, they all died at a very tender age when I was very, very young. But then when they died, everything changed. So I learned to hustle when I was very, very extremely young. And, uh, you know, the fact that I've, I've, I've hustled so much, I've gone through a lot of rejection, my dream literally wasn't just handed to me like this. I had to like fight for it. I had to fight for my space. I had to make sure I cement my name on whatever that I'm doing. So I always remember where I came from. And that's the one thing that actually keeps me grounded. And then I also, I also always put myself in a position knowing that anyone can be replaced. Trust me, even the best people in the whole world, anyone can be replaced. Today you are number one but then tomorrow if you do have a diva attitude if you don't want to work with people people get tired really really fast you could be the best in the game but then when someone else comes in and they're super humble they're down to earth they're approachable they're easy to work with they can always claim your slot they can always you know take whatever that you've been working for so i always remind myself of where i came from and then um I don't let them get to my head however much these girls could blow up and be the biggest models in the world I constantly remind myself that I started from somewhere. Once upon a time, I was a stalker. Once upon a time, I wanted to be this particular thing in life. So I've never in my life let them, you know, get to me here. Yeah. Never. Yeah. What are the requirements to reach my dreams and join credible agencies? I talked about that, but then I'll just summarize it up. Requirements. Yeah. Yeah. We talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. Let me just summarize it up. Passion, determination, zeal, look for a good agency, research, know whatever you want, have a vision. Yeah. The, the one thing that I keep telling a lot of people that want to, you know, venture into modeling or, you know, pageants is it starts with you. It really, really starts with you. By the time you wake up and then you start having a vision, having a dream of, I want to be a model, when it's not here, you're going to give up. Trust me, you will give up. You could actually go on to win Miss Uganda, but then if you don't want it so much, you will just tell the organizers your crown is there. So it all goes back to here. You have to want it so bad. Okay, the stereotypes have always been there. Trust me, they've always, always been there and they will always be there. But then it comes back to, before someone signs up to be a model, they need to get, they need to get an agent that believes in them. They need to get an agency that is very respected, an agent that, you know, an agent agency that is very re reputable as well. So that um, when they are scouted and they're under an agency, this agency has the obligation to talk to the parents of the girls. We do that the whole time. It's very, very, very important for any mother agency to always make sure that they talk to you and the parents of the girls. How can people reach me? Um, the best way to reach me right now, the fact that we're still under lockdown um, online, Instagram, Jora Model Management. Facebook, Jora Model Management. Twitter, Jora Model Management. Online, it's Jora Model Management. Or our, our website, www.joramodelmanagement.com. If you don't want to go online when things are back to normal and then, you know, we can move around, we can go all over the place. Our offices are located on Tirupati Mall. Tirupati Mall is just opposite the American Embassy. Just opposite the American Embassy. Yeah. And um, we are on the third floor. Yeah, on the third floor. When you reach the third floor, you'll definitely see JMM. Like